Well, hello, and thanks very much for checking out a conversation with Jack Collins of Dead Poet Society. My name's John Williams. I'm the owner and operator of what was at Radar.com that you'll see me giddily just to try and explain a quick contextual share of what that is and who I am with Jack when the chat starts shortly. I'm committed to only doing one take for this intro and I will continue. The new record, the second, Fission, is out in just a few days. It's the 22nd of January right now. It's out on Friday the 26th. This is one of the most exciting modern rock bands on this planet. Here's a conversation with Jack, guitar player in Dead Poet Society. Hello. Hello, Mr. Collins. Hello, can you hear me all right? I can hear you. You're probably the first person that's ever come into a chat that's like on it straight a fucking way. Full video, full audio, we're laughing. Oh, okay. Good. That's good to know. Thank you. How many? Yeah, well, I was prepared because I, I did one a little while ago, so I have an advantage. I was going to say, like, have you done any this morning or this afternoon for you so far? Yeah, I did one a, a, a few minutes ago. Perfect. So, so got the trial one out of the way. <laughs> there we go. Well, Jack, it's a real pleasure to speak to you, man. The first bit I'll give is a little bit of context behind myself, which is that I worked commercial rock radio for a decade. I left four years ago to start my own online-based modern rock radio station that is the epitome of true modern rock discovery. It's not anything, no shade being thrown at the industry. It's just there's a very finite amount of space, as you know, for bands like you that, quite frankly, are one of the most exciting on the planet and should be on every radio station everywhere. Just Thank fill, you. Just filling the Appreciate boots a little bit. But for, for real, though, man, like you know this from your journey the last seven, eight years, that it's a fickle machine to get involved in that mainstream. And so what was that radio is purely about trying to highlight nothing older than 2020. And with that, over 5,000 songs by 2,000 plus bands, whom I feature, and also everything I earn, I essentially give away back to the mental well-being of the community, whether that's for moving house or music lessons or for counselling and into bands, independent bands for the most part, like all these records around me. How can we help support their dreams and galvanise their goals, right? Let's buy out everything in the merch store. Let's help them fundraise toward a van or if the studio got hit by a storm, whatever it might be. It's just trying to all connect over the fluidity of modern rock and the excitement that it brings. And then also just fucking make sure that we're all growing at the same time in a nutshell otherwise i could spend the whole 15 minutes just talking about this that's awesome man first of all i think you and i would be really good friends because uh that sounds pretty great <laughs> awesome well you're more than welcome if this goes well to check out what was at radar.com and just see if it speaks to you man actually i learned about your band care of a friend this is seven years ago now that had gone over to do some production stuff on the other side of america i'm on the west coast of canada which i moved to 15 years ago and mm. he came back and said, you have to check out Dead Poet Society. And then when I first started this station, um, a young lad from Nashville, Tennessee, sent me a bunch of pictures with you and with Will, because he's a fellow drummer, and was like, if you don't know, I was like, I know, and I can't wait for the chance to speak with you. So what I would like to do, Jack, is because time is, is precious here and you've got more to get to, is I have not heard the full records yet. I'm privy to the singles that have been released so far ahead of the release on Friday. I've made some notes. If you're willing to just roll through these notes, I throw opinions at you. You throw thoughts back at me. Simple. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. For running in circles, I wrote quite simply, this is just so crisp. Just enough distortion and fuzz on the bass to fill out the center, allow the super crisp guitars to duel left and right throughout the song. The little extra lick of reverb that's used in the choruses, for example, on run away and my face. I just had to do that. Uh, the bounce left and right. What they do is they highlight the incredible backing vocal tracks that are very subtle for me in the first chorus, but they become thicker and more noticeable from the second onwards. And the production throughout the whole song of Running in Circles. I'm going 100 miles an hour because I've been excited for this chat. I will slow it down. That's the fine. The production is seamless. Everything in its right place to a T. Everything complements itself around it. And it is a very large universe of dead poet society this is there's no constraints on this song but yet it's so particular too thank you i appreciate that yeah that was something we were striving for is to really up that production game and get to that size that we always wanted so it means a lot you saying that is there a particular because i mean this is a note that recurs a few times in that uh, with i hope you hate me and i'm skipping a, a long way away here but one of the things i love about what i'm hearing with the record so far is the time that you've taken to create these atmospheric fucking sounds like the, they're not and we'll and i'll get a bit more particular in, in the next few songs but in speaking with running in circles 
where does this place in the process of going about the new record fission? Is it early on? Is it halfway through? Because it seems extremely particular. We wrote a couple of songs uh, first to start the album. One of them was Running in Circles. The other one is a song called Uto, which is coming out on the on the full length. Um, and those two songs kicked off the record and inspired the all the songs that came after it. Running in Circles and Uto, we wrote in this room, all four of us, um, late night, I think it was a weekend, and we were just cooking. It was, it was like magic when we wrote that one. Uh, for us, at least, it was just... It was just a magical night. Everything came out right away. A lot of the times, you know, it's excruciating to write a song, but uh, Running in Circles was one of those ones that was, it, it wrote itself and in the presence of all four of us, which was unique to what we've done in the past. In the past, you've mainly sort of done your own thing, sent files along, drop boxes, and then pieced together in other locations? Right, right, exactly. Or we write in the studio when we're jamming, and a lot of times we'll get, a riff out of that or a chorus out of that or a verse etc and then we work on it from there but running in circles was everything from the intro to the verse to the pre-course to the chorus to the post-chorus was all written in like three or four hours so i think that's why that's part of the reason why that song is so special to me well what's one of the moments you're most proud of in it just to be selfish and think about you yourself and your journey so far or one of the moments in our band or in that song in this particular song yeah yeah, um, it was the last chorus for me, the way the last chorus hit. Um, and I'm just proud of the way we de developed it melodically, really, uh, for that to just come out of us. I think uh, Jack sat down with the microphone after Dylan and I had written a few chords to it, and his melody came out right away. And as soon as he was done that, Dylan said, oh, the chord needs to go up like this. And then I plugged it in and recorded it. and. Um, and it worked like right away. So just that chorus and the way that chorus comes back in at the end of the song is, is, is a big moment for me. One that I'm proud of. The, the main word that kept coming up when I was sitting down, cause I listened to songs 30, 40, 50 times and analyzed the shit out of it. I go through layer by layer. This is just from a nerd standpoint of, and also just from trying to find all those secret little nuggets, like the backing vocals in that second verse, in the second chorus, pardon me, when they really come to the forefront a little bit more and they're sat very, very tight either side of, of Jack, like on the shoulder, not like Devil Angel sort of shit, but just they're really tight, like tunnel vision. And two words that I wrote a lot when listening to these songs are jigsaw, like the perfect jigsaw. It's this, this, these songs are just meticulous. And then tunnel, like tunnel vision, whether it's tunnel vision, whether you're looking through the the difficulties of life that you're sort of working your way through and growing from, or whether it's how you go about, because this is the thing when we, it flows into hurt. I have to, because that was a crafty cheeky fucking thing as well to throw the two videos into it, which I think is a good, was that a particular nod at just the state of music right now, which is, Oh my God, you're so excited for one is two. Okay. Shut up and take the two. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely was. We, we, we all wanted to do something different by we all, I mean, our whole team, you know, I have to give credit to our management, our label, um, they were helpful in, in us coming up with some unique ideas like that. I can't say that the releasing two songs at once was an original idea. Some other bands recently have done that, but we liked the idea of, yeah, just, just trying to be as unconventional as we could while still, you know, reaching as many people as we can with the music. I just thought it was genius that you didn't even note it in the write-up on YouTube or wherever you released it because it's a fickle state that we're in right now where it's views, it's clicks, it's mm. entertainment. And then at the same time, how can you monetize that entertainment? So by putting one song or well, two songs under one, you know, a lot of people might say, well, hang on, we need to now release it again as a separate entity to try and make a hundred dollars from streaming services, you know, whatever it might be. So I thought that was just pretty astute. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. We, we try to put the art first always, you know, and for me, at least everything has got to be, cohesive it's got to be part of the part of the whole art artistic vision we don't want to do something like you said just for the clicks or views it's got to be it's still got to be within that world we can't we can't escape that world if we're trying to create something special what i wrote for her which obviously follows pretty quickly on and we're discussing is that in the movie theaters sometimes the feature's about to start and depending where you're at it's going to go from four three to widescreen right we're going to just squidge down the space a bit more. I'm applying that to the stereo field and how you've created her. 
And the song <laughs> follows, a, I've written a, a, a vast, rich, dead poet society forest and transports you then to an underground tunnel full of sludge, heartache and defiance. Here's what, it's pretty dramatic, but it's what <laughs> flowed out. The stereo field shrinks, the controlled aggression becomes more pointed and the breakdown to end it is one of my favorite moments in rock music, period. Because it just goes to show the explosiveness and the ability that you will have that you can flirtatiously share 12 seconds of fucking mightiness with us and then say, peace out, don't worry about it. But if we further explore those last 12 seconds, um, it's to me, it's like, oh, I've put it in my other drawer because the cat's been playing with it the last few days, but I got a stress ball because uh, uh -huh. I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm buzzing a lot of the time, as you might sense. And so yeah, it's like a it. stress ball that you've put in the middle of that mix in those last 12 seconds. And again, this goes back to your meticulous nature in creating those atmospheric sounds with guitar or bass. And that stress ball, not to be rude, how it's sort of manipulating the sounds in the center of the stereo field for me is almost like a really cleverly hidden fart. Uh, it's got this squelchy, scrunchy, you know, stress ball feel to it that spreads. It's like Venom, Spider-Man Venom vibes. It just takes over. If, I don't know if that's transmitting to you or not, but that's how it makes me feel there. I love it. I love it. That's great. I, I totally agree. It's not a fart, though. <laughs> I'll take it, man. <laughs> okay. It, it, it got through to me. <laughs> but as long as it's not like... A, not, this is where sometimes I throw the shit out there, like psychedelic porn crumbles with Jack and whatnot, and I'm like, is this an effect? And then you learn that, yes, it was something ridiculous that was captured and then manipulated, but this is not a fart. Um, and I, and I, <laughs> I'm glad that you're taking this well. Um, yeah. With How Could I Love You, I wrote my favorite part of this song is the guitar licks that mimic and mock the lead melody. And message of how could I love you? So it's just on that left hand shoulder again. It's probably you. Um, it's mm -hmm. up in the top left. Reminds me of a plasma ball with sharp electronic sounds and refined distortions. Little bits of like little splinters that fuck you, fuck you. How could I? And it's just playing with the other jacks so well. Oh, that's awesome. That's 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 some of my favorite feedback so far. Definitely. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Well, what what stands out to you with how could I love you? Like, because that to me seems like a very particular moment where I don't know. Again. If it's just something that you, it's just, just clicked in real quick from what you're alluding to so far in this process, or if it's something that you spent, I need something that that battles you, but it's not too, not necessarily minor, uh, and and calling you in a different direction, but just being more pointed. Well, how can I love you? Was a riff that we've had for the opening riff to that song we've had for five years, maybe, and uh, I always wanted it to be a song. So um, one day I was I was. I was in my girlfriend's room. She was on a, a, a call with someone else and I was, I was sitting by her, um, uh, what's it called? I was sitting by her closet with my guitar with no, with no amp on, I was just playing the riff. And the chorus uh, came out of me in, in just a few minutes. And, and, I, and I thought, okay, this could work because we'd had the riff for so long and nothing was working. We had a whole like, um, we had a whole, song around it at one point that was totally different it was like an off time song and it really didn't work so we abandoned it and 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 i i tried desperately to make it into a song that felt right and that's yeah that's what came out of it and then we reworked the verse a bunch jack changed a bunch of the lyrics um but that's how that song came to life i can't wait for the whole record it's fucking ridiculous man um, I, I can't wait for you to hear it. There's there's several songs on there that I'm excited for you to hear. This is this feels to me like just it's a delicate balance with how do you release songs that obviously epitomize what you're going to get, or then do you release songs that maybe aren't what the rest of it's going to become, and how you play with your audience, audience and your fans, and then try and bring new ones in. It's to me, it seems like what you've put out so far is is very much an introduction to something that's going to fucking blow my brains out. Maybe there's two or, two or so songs, I think, that are just going to be some of the most ridiculous shit you've done. That's my guesstimate. You'll share what you share three days away. Yeah. I, 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 I think you're right. I, there's, there's, a song, there's two songs on the album that I would argue may be better than anything that we've released yet. And um, Jack, our singer also has that same opinion with two different songs. So, and all of us have one or two songs in the album that haven't come out yet that we're the most passionate about. So it was a difficult process choosing those singles. And it's equally as exciting to release the album because it's not like we, 
we you know we've released all the goods yet i don't think no it's uh it's it's good to get to know you because i see that the cards are close to your chest and yeah. they kind of have to be in 2024 yeah. as well you know you got exactly. it's it, this is something that i've been really working on to be honest with you is like as i try and grow this station and i know where it can get in 15 20 years and then i'm you know going to go and work at a grocery store after our chat's done mm. and it, it's the patience of what you know and then it's the growth that you know will come in that time that you maybe don't need to be as excitable and spew everything that's coming and uh, i have verbal diarrhea so at times for me personally not to speak to you it's like, don't fucking tell them yet. Like, no one knows I'm, in, I'm interviewing you yet. No one knows that. And most of my community, yeah. and of like the 60 subscribers, half of them are like diehard fucking Dead Poet Society fans. So That's this awesome. is going to be like, I'm used to saying to everyone, hey, in three weeks, in two weeks, tomorrow. But this one is like, starting the year with my first chat, That's You, and they're not going to see it coming. That's awesome. Um, okay, we've got only a, a five minutes left or so, I believe. I wasn't told a time, but I'm presuming usually it's 20 minutes. Um, but don't worry about it. Yeah, I, I'm 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 in no rush, so don't sweat it. Okay. Um, with I hope you hate me. I wrote. I love the textual composition when it comes to the use of guitar and bass in this song, and this is what I've mentioned fucking so many times in this short chat so far. How you flip the script and capturing the played instrument. Example A: Either you choose to use the root strum or pluck whatever to create a metaphorical cloud box effect around it, whether that's a reverb or an echo delay, whatever it might be. Then secondly, you flip it in other moments of the song where you don't hear the root. You hide the root, strum, chord, whatever it might be, and yet use that to create an eerie energy, an atmospheric sound in the song. That is what, to me, if I'm looking at the growth as a nerd and super fan of your band, that is the massive differential that has come out of the, the that is being showcased on this record, is that it's not necessarily, it's standard deliver. Like this is pure modern rock that I fucking love and adore. But these extra elements of atmosphere, this is next level Dead Poet Society. Wow, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your detail and listening. That's, that's, that means so much to me. Well, that's very kind, man. Like, where'd you start? I, I, it's, you're, this, is, this is what's so cool about finally getting to chat with people is that, yes, I'm giddy and excited, and I know mm -hmm. that the next time we speak, I'll be more, you know, a little bit more chilled like you are right now. But I, it, it's helpful. I like it. Yeah. But this is this is what I love about doing this, man. For 20 years, I get to nerd out and speak to people and just say, are you aware of how fucking brilliant you are? Because you are <laughs> you and your bandmates. Like, actually, let's just sidestep and talk about them for a second. Like Jack on lead vocals. He's come up a few times. Absolute stud fucking rock star. Will mm -hmm. Goodroad from drummer to drummer like Will. And I am not the drummer that Will is, uh, but Will is the kind of drummer that inspires me to try and keep improving. Like, let's talk about Will for a second. Like, this guy lives in the fucking pocket and just seems to know exactly how to serve a song, always. Yeah, what's unique about Will is he's the one in the band who's always, every day, working on his instrument. He's, if if you're wondering where he is, he's playing drums. That's the kind of person he is. And he uh, he takes his instrument more seriously than the rest of us. Um, I, I lucked out finding these three guys. I mean, they're the, they're the three best musicians in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just, sometimes I feel like I'm just, uh, you know, it's, I somehow got lucky enough to be with these guys and I'm just right. I'm along for the ride. <laughs> Well, long may that attitude continue because otherwise the band's going to implode from just massive fucking egos in 10 years yeah. time. Um, what about Dylan Brenner? Because, I mean, I've spoken about this a lot, how you and him really create these atmospheric sounds throughout uh, the sonic field and the songs that you create. Dylan just seems, again, it's just it's, it's just what you all do so well. Like, you just all complement each other so well. But what does Dylan bring to the table and inspire you with? Dylan is, he might be the most, uh, the biggest prodigy in the band. I mean, he is the, the most technically talented guitar player I know. I, before he was in the band, he was a good friend of ours. And I would recommend him to everybody if they needed a guitar player for hire. Um, he's just, everything comes naturally to him, including which we recently learned songwriting. So he's got a really technical eye on things, which is really helpful when you're trying to just look back and go, is this a good song? Is this a good riff? And he's there to say yes or no, and you can trust his opinion. And his musicality that he brings is is just so next level. 
that with the record definitely would not have been the same without him. Who have you known the longest out of Jack, Will and Dylan? I met Jack first, um, uh, a few weeks into my first year in college and he was actually friends with my roommate. Uh, then we became friends and then he joined the band. Will was shortly after that, about a year after that. We met Dylan along the same time, but Dylan didn't join the band until four years ago. So the whole process has been about 11 years and uh, the full lineup, the current lineup has been this way for actually almost five years now. It's been this current lineup. That's fucking bonkers to me because it's pretty much like this is the fifth year since I, since I quit commercial radio and into the fifth year of moving in with my partner, Jody and her son, Harley, who just turned 10 a few mm. days ago. I you can't see all the balloons that I've hidden behind me, but we had the birthday party yesterday. Um, yes. That's bonkers to think that then Dylan's come in right before everything and not to bring it up again, but it is part of history now, right before the lockdown. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he went on our first tour with us right before the lockdown. Uh, we had a great tour, and then we asked him to be in the band. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Because how, how, how much time have you spent working on this, on Fission? Like, how much time has been spent either in your room or, or piecing together? Two years? It's probably, yeah, I think it's been two years, solid two years. And what is it now? It's January. So lo exactly a year ago is when we really recorded the bulk of it was this month last year. So it's been at least two years. Well, actually I can't really count the last six months cause the album has been finished, but yeah, two years I'd say is how long it took us. Yeah. Man, I, I this is, we've touched on it. Not to look, not to look too far ahead here, but getting that context of Dylan and then how this is, this might just be a career band. Fingers crossed. This might just be Fingers it. Crossed, man. Right? See the world. To God's ears. <laughs> meet some people. Yeah. Fuck me. This is that's amazing. Okay. Um, to roll through the last couple, eighty-one tons. I wrote uh, this. This uh, I didn't write this. Um, but singers that were getting along so well, and I can be cheeky enough to say this kind of some of the guitar work in this reminds me of some music technology coursework I did. Oh God. If I'm 30, whatever, a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, when I was 17, 18. And I further cheekily mentioned that actually most of that song, the teacher did, um, and he played like a piano part in, and I then threw it around the rest of my creation and threw different effects on it and different instrumentation. <laughs> Just tried to basically steal yeah. his riff and utilize it throughout the song. But I wrote yeah. for 81 tons space travel guitars that bend like they're dodging asteroids. That's the first thing I wrote. Awesome. Um, the 81 ton shuffle and groove is so fucking good. It incorporates so many nods to other genres, via use of composition or instrument and use of effect. The shaping of the effects on Jack's vocal throughout is a story in itself to me. I wrote, it doesn't sound like one effect fits all for this. It sounds like it's more purposeful in particular that maybe with each line that you have chosen, whoever it might be as a collective to put a little bit of whatever this, I don't know. It's, it's reverby, it's delay, it's echoey, it's it's creepy, it's got a sort of steel um, texture to it, but it, it feels like it's been crafted throughout his performance, and not every single time he sings, but maybe every one in four or five or so. Am I going mm -hmm. completely down a rabbit hole that doesn't exist, or was that a particular thought process to make his vocals stand out in certain moments with certain lyric? Yeah, it definitely was. It definitely was. And it, it, we pay attention to those details a lot, every part of the process. Now, we had a really great producer help us with that song, Anton DeLoss. He's brilliant. He's a genius in his own right. And, uh, you know, he helped contribute some of those ideas. But, you know, we're all there suggesting all these different things that, yeah, we, he needs distortion in this part when the guitars come down and he needs an ethereal reverb right before that. We love heavy contrast as i'm sure you can tell we like we like it to go from beautiful crisp sad to angry and uh, demented and loud and furious so we we really love those contrasts especially when we play them live it's just that song we knew that it was it it, it felt like a, a an an evolution song for us some of these songs feel like totally different that we haven't done which is exciting but 
some of the ones that feel the best are the ones that feel like they've been our sound forever, but they're just a little bit different, hopefully a little bit more next level in that sense. And that's something that Will does really well drumming wise with 81 tons and in my condition that follows is that again, serving the song and just some of the little nuanced parts might only be a half bar, might be a full bar Oh yeah, that, that yeah. he'll put in there. And it just, it just drives the evolution very slowly. Um, yeah. Just perfectly. Yeah. Well, we do a lot of these songs, um, much like other artists start out on the demo form on my computer most of the time. And uh, they never really feel quite right, obviously, because it's a lot of it is MIDI program drums. And then as soon as we bring it to the, what we call the space, our rehearsal space, and we get Will playing drums on it, almost every single time it goes from just a song to a Dead Poet Society song. So he, he really does have very much a signature style and he has a, a signature ear for what to contribute at the right moments. Massively agreed. For my condition, I wrote the song's just beautiful. Uh, the composition guitar versus melody is warm and uplifting, but that's where the cleverness in the song is because it's the contrasting energy to what the lyrics and the journey is about in that regard. The song is another fine example I wrote of the ability you have to create these atmospheric sounds using guitar and vocal samples. How long did it take to get the closing wail and slide I wrote for some reason? It tickled me. Oh, the slide guitar, you mean? It felt like two different takes. It felt like there was a last... Uh, a last slide cut and then a last like a, yeah there was it felt like two parts or was it one part or it just felt like it was a very particular closing uh you might be right that song was a lot of layers a lot of different guitar jack is a better slide guitar player than me i'm right now learning um because i'm playing that part live and he recorded that part and he he's really good at using the slide to just express or create an atmosphere and I'm not even I'm not even sure he knows exactly how he did it, but when we were recording it, he just, you know, takes the slide, goes all the way up, tries to make it really feel like like you said a whale, right? Yeah. That's kind of what yeah, that's 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 what I imagine too. But um I can't remember if it was two parts or if it was one part, but he was yeah, he's responsible for that. How many strings are on your guitar? Twenty eight? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Is it is it near you? Uh, no, unfortunately it's at the uh the rehearsal space. That's okay. I'm I'm have you I don't know if I'm just remiss in, in seeing online. Have you done any like gig uh guitar run through with the, the latest one yet? No, I haven't actually. Okay. Um yeah. But we do we play I play seven string guitars. Jack plays six strings, but um I do the seven string because I like that stability in the in the low note. He he like and it and it and it works I think because he likes it a little bit more raw, on those lower detuned notes and I like it a little bit more, uh, stable. So when they come together, I think it creates that right atmosphere. I'm just realizing because th this reminds me of like the breakdown and I hope you hate me. Which I did I skip that? No, we spoke about that a bit. Maybe I just excitedly moved on to something else. Um, in my last talk notes. About it again. In my last notes for I Hope You Hate Me, I said the breakdown after fuck is, is, as you know, it's scorching, it's raucous, it's intense. It fucking slams home the message of the whole song. But it mm -hmm. transported me yeah. back 20 years. And this is something that I've always been really particular with when, since I've been lucky enough to be in radio and, and doing this, is that I get that bands in press releases and, and I get that the system is like, oh, remind you of or might make you think of, etc. But at the end of the day, for me, each individual band, inspirations aside, they're still their unique, that's still a unique band with unique individuals in it. But mm. with I Hope You Hate Me, the way that that ended, it took me back 20 years to having my first car and a 6CD auto change, thinking I'm a fucking badass in the back of it, right? And, and I've got some of my favorite bands in there that are on here, like Queens of Stone Age and, and, and System of a Down and, and Early Muse and Deftones and Foo Fighters and got them all and that's that's where that's where that breakdown took me was like all the way back then and that corresponds with you talking about the guitar and having when i have that that more particular control of low end because that is the signature of this record is that despite how low you take it it never muddies the mix it never distracts from the message of the, the lyrical content and, and journey and it and it ultimately is the foundation and the walls for the most part of everything that Dead Poet Society do on this record to me. And to have that kind of control 
throughout, and I mean, I've not heard the whole record, but for, for me, the whole record so far, that is fucking ticking every box for me, every box for me selfishly. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I do. Got to check in after, after 20 minutes, 25 minutes. You, you, when's your next one? Uh, I don't have one coming up. So take your time. I'm enjoying it. Well, that's very kind. Um, okay. Well, that's I'm, a really sick room you got there, by the way. I'm pretty jealous of that. This, the most of this room is my partner, Jody's creation. She is oh, yeah. a massive fan of seventies. And uh -huh. I think she found this picture. Um, a neighbor across the road had thrown it on his lawn seven or eight years ago when she, when she moved in here and she's like, okay. Um, but then we like thrifted this giant with the fish tank. This, this is a fucking colossal bookshelf record player thing um, yeah. from a farmer in the middle of nowhere, like 45 minute drive away in a beautiful place called Machosen. And it was for free. Um, awesome. And that was when I was still in a band and we had the big Ford Econa line. And I was like, it's going in the Econa line. And it, it took a while to load her up because it weighs a shit ton, but it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is. It's um, great. I love the records everywhere too. I got to get some of those. Yeah. I just sort of took over the, the lower house with way too many records. Um, well, there's no problem with that. No. But then actually what I'll do, because I didn't think we were going to have this much time. Uh, and again, to, to, to let you know of a few things that I'm trying to do this year is my approach for the last 12, 13 years has been, if I get a 10 minute conversation in modern, in commercial broadcasting, and in that realm, it's all about just get sound bites, just get a really cool sound bite. So I would spend nine minutes getting to know someone and then ask a question in the last minute and mm, get an answer yeah. because you've made a connection that maybe is different to others, not, not comparing with others, but just trying to get that. Right. Not, not the same, like, yes, we made the album in a studio and we're really proud of it. Like not trying to yeah. get, not <laughs> that, you know? Right. Right. And, um, I said to my partner last night, I, this year, I'm not, I'm going to have all surprises. I'm not going to tell any of these fuckers and these amazing wazzers that support me who I'm speaking to when I'm speaking to. And when I get 15 minutes, I'm going to stay to 15 minutes because a lot of the time, um, I've sort of prided myself on unlocking a connection and then 15 turns into 60 turns into 90. And a lot of my conversations, if you dive into them are like two hours long, um, with bands oh, wow. and cool. they just, they just go. Um, I mean, so because I've not got anything planned beyond this point, because I want to just be in and out and let you get on with the next person. What I will oh, yeah. do is what I always do at the end of a chat is tell you about bands you might not know about. So we'll, yeah, start, we'll start with Spiral Drive. Uh, this is a this is one fella from and you're on my Logitech Brio, so it looks like shit to you. I've got when anyway. Um, Spiral, Spiral Drive. Drive. Tell me tell me some bands. I'm going to add them right now on Spotify. Spiral Drive. I would probably start with. This is difficult because this whole record is incredible. Raphael, multi instrumentalist with a cast of characters in Germany. I would start with uh, probably Illusion and Space Train, just to give you the vibe of what he's all about. Very psychedelic rock. Um, and just, just like psychedelic modern rock, really, really fucking good stuff. Sick! I just added both of those songs. Do you know Kick a Kick a from uh, from England? I do, I do. I uh, Spine Farm I never, Records, uh, mate. So in, but I'm. Yeah, give me a song to. Uh, is there a good song of theirs that I should listen to? Yeah, they're also on Spine Farm. You should go. Uh, right. What's so good? And I'm not saying that as if you need to know every fucker on Spine Farm. Uh, I'm just placing, <laughs> just connecting dots. I'm not shaming you. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, new records is coming up in a few months here, but uh, New England featuring Bob Villain and Rob the Supermarket. The first two tracks on his What You Could Have Won, this epitomizes cool. a band that really do speak for their community and the state of the lower middle class right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, for me, authenticity is what connects and sells. And yeah. that's the same with, with your band, right? What Jack's singing about, like, oh yeah. I, I hope I, so, yeah. I can dance that dance with you. Uh, from Col yeah. from Boulder, Colorado. Do you know the Velveteers? Uh, I think I've heard of them. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Velveteers. The Velveteers, Motel 27. I'd start with that. Um, okay, sick. Uh, Dana Black Keys produced this record with them and signed them to Easy Eye Sound. Oh, well, I love them. Um, very, very good. Um, if you like big, aggressive, distorted riffs, you need to check out a couple. No, I hate those. Do you know these two from Scotland? 
Well, who is that? All right. Okay. Uh, all right. You said you hate them. You were being very funny. I, no, I, I hate um, you said big, loud, aggressive riffs, and I hate those. It, loud noises. Steve Carell, yeah. please back off. Uh, Vuk <laughs> Vukovi from Scotland. Incredible two piece. Um, that just uh, everything's just dynamite. Lasso is a good one to check out first. What's that? How do you spell that band name? Vukovi is V U K O V I. And what's the song? Uh, Lasso. Or, cool. Lass or Lasso. Right. I don't know. I don't actually, I still don't know at 36 how you fucking say Lasso. I think it's Lasso. Yeah. Um, not much of a, of a Western fan. Anyway, Fan Club. Do you know Fan Club from Ireland? I, I think I used to listen to them. I definitely know them. Check out Ni Club. Nightmare. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah. I remember this band. Oh, yeah. I'm really hoping they've got something in their back pocket to come out this year because it's been it's been a little while. And um, yeah, I, 2019 was last while. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. they're active, but they're not um, active. Like they're posting that they're in the studio, but taking their time. Uh, the last yeah. one I'll probably share with you is uh, from Chicago. This is a band called High Priest. And High Priest. Um, this record is one of my favorites um invocation that came out this year you've, you've got to check out divinity first okay. um these guys are i tell you what actually would be a pretty good shout to even connect with because they are just the wall of distortion and the veracity of it oh cool um this is a really in fact i don't think i've ever taken this one out of here this might be a one for because basically all these records that i've just shown you um yeah. i will buy and I've been trying to do this with Dead Poet Society stuff, but you've had a few things that have been limited to US postage only. Um, and that's not, again, not a shame thing. It's just letting you know context. And right. uh, what I try and do is I buy, like of this invocation, I bought 10 copies of this. Oh, wow. And then I, and then I keep a copy for myself and my partner and, and, and Harley. And then nine are given away to subscribers through different oh, contesting. That's awesome. That's and so, so cool. Every band that I've shown you, that's happened with at least three to five copies, and that includes CDs and cassettes, depending if oh, listeners so can't cool. do that. So that's that's a big thing. Like I worked. Oh, and you must know Des Rocks. You must. Oh know. yeah, Des Rocks is awesome. My God, this guy. Which album do you have? I well, the latest one, Dream Machine, is fucking. Oh just, yeah. Th this is. He's, I've been trying to interview this guy for three years. Um, <laughs> he is the epitome of rock and roll. It's and, just tough to get a hold of, huh? And because he's the epitome of rock and roll, he works hard. Like, yeah, yeah, insane. Oh, I can tell. Hey, have you heard of the band um, Post Profit? Yes, Post Profit. I've been playing a lot. The new record oh, is insane. Look at that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're they're awesome. Are they friends? They are friends. We're bringing them on the road for for a week or so, um, in the U.S. this spring. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, and then. I think you announced because the nearest city that you're playing to me, which is still like three hours away, is Vancouver. And Where you so you're in British Columbia? Yeah, or I'm, on, are you... I'm on Vancouver Island, so I'm a oh, ferry wow. a ferry away. Like it's either a two hour ferry to Seattle or a two hour ferry, an hour and a half, but two hours with driving to get to Vancouver. How far are you from uh, Tofino? Tofino, man, I'm like I'm on that island, but I'm a five hour drive south. No way, it's that long, huh? Yeah. Wow. Are, are you coming to Tofino? No, I'm a surfer, so I've wanted to, to to visit that beach to experience it. But I am going to be in Vancouver, I think, early to visit a friend and go snowboarding up in BC. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited for that. I love that area, man. It's beautiful, huh? Yeah, it really is. I, uh, yeah, I can connect you to some surfer dudes if, if necessary. That would be awesome. There's some wonderful yeah. souls around here. Um, because what I was going to say is, yeah, I think you've announced a Vancouver show when I'm going back to England for the first time in seven years or so. And then Harley oh, and Joe, wow. they've never left. They've never gone to England, my partner and her son. So um, oh, that'll be awesome. That's that's the way that is. But we will. I will watch you live at some point. I've yet to see the band live. It's just not been doable so far. Um, well, we uh, we you know, we're not going to stop anytime soon. No, thanks. you're not. <laughs> the ultimate dream, man. No, the, no. the ultimate dream is is would be to get into what what I'm striving to get towards. And I'm just going to plant this seed now, Jack, is that in five, 10 years, I'd love to have a music festival downtown Indiana Harbor in Victoria. That's free. So that all the bands are going to get paid, but it's mm -hmm. an exposure festival. 
Like, so then okay. to have like, cause I mean, I know we've got mutual friends in Mr. Ben Lolo and broken love. Like it'd be awesome to have like broken love, dead poet society, bring some of these crazy buggers from Europe and kick a peachy and spiral drive and so on and so forth. Poof profit, whatever. Um, that would be it, so cool. it'd be so cool to have that. So just planting oh, a yeah. seed. I love that dream. I love that goal. Okay. Well, look, I actually do have to get ready for work, but, um, oh, okay. It's been such a thrill to fucking speak to you, man. I, I appreciate you understanding my giddy excitement in the first seven minutes. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the excitement for, for the music. That's just giving me energy. So I appreciate that. Awesome. And yeah, I would love to have a chat another time, you know, whenever our universe, uh, whenever the universe lets our paths cross again and maybe bring some of the other guys in or even bring some friends from other bands in and just have a band circle. That'd be sweet too. That would if you're be into awesome. It. That would be awesome. Whenever you want. Awesome. Well, Jack, is there anything that I've missed that you want to share? I don't think so. I, I think you nailed it. I couldn't contribute past that. But that's, yeah, but that's the unfortunate thing sometimes as well. It's when I give an opinion and then I get, and I'm trying to unlock the next level. Um, yeah. But I'd have to think about, I mean, I'm sure we could talk for hours, but you covered a lot of the stuff that I'm excited about. So that's, that's great. Let's hone in on one last thing, because you were hinting sure. at this earlier on. So you and other Jack, you have two opposing songs, which is four total on the record. We've not heard yet until Fishing is out, until Fishing is out on the 26th. Of those two songs, what's the recurring theme that brings that opinion that you think this is going to blow the minds of people that have heard our band because they've not heard this yet? Well, so the this, this song that Jack loves, and I, also, I love the song too, um, I, I, it's really well crafted. I think the one that, that, that he's the most excited for, um, it's just front to back. I think it's just a really solid song, kind of like running in circles, but maybe even more catchy. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a song that is feel good for me. Like I could put it on and I'm pretty sure I'm, I know I'm going to enjoy it. Some of the other songs I have to be in a particular mood for the one that I'm excited to share it's just a, it's it's just in a different realm in terms of why I like it. It's uh, it's different uh, riff wise because it uses a fretless guitar and that that creates this sort of really strange. It's it's a lot. It's like Salt, but also in a different universe than Salt. Um, it's got that same like microtonal, bendy kind of sound, but it's it's also got like a big chorus, which I'm excited for because we haven't really done that yet with the fretless guitars. You've been using them in the music videos, though, the fretless. Yeah, yeah. Does that correspond we, with the production in the song or just because you wanted it to look good in a video, like, or to hint at what's coming? Is the fretless, because the fretless has been used throughout other songs, I presume, if it's in the video. It is. So the fretless yeah. is used in a lot of songs. Um, and I play it in a lot of songs. How could I love you? I play the fretless. Um, but this one is is centered around it. And it's not it's not so much the the unique the fact that that's different for us or, or just different to use a fretless guitar. It's not so much that it's more the, the, the energy that it creates, the atmosphere that it creates when the song is sort of built around that, that microtonal weird sound. I, I just get excited about it because that feels like it's ours. You know, it just feels like something we can own. And that's the song in the record that is, is that in a, in a nutshell. Mm. So it's called Coet. Make sure to look out for it when it comes out. Ah, you gave me the name. We get, it took yeah. 20 minutes, but we got the fucking name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look out for that when it comes out. I'm curious to know what you think. That's awesome, man. Yeah, because it's like, I know in your press release, and I'm going on and on, but there we go, whatever. Works two minutes away. But in the press release, it says some of the bands that have inspired you guys to to make music and to make rock music. And that's what's so cool for me. Like when I was drumming uh the last band i was in was the most serious band for sure and, and that's at the same time why it sort of fell apart um mm. for some of the other members and it's it's a fine line in trying to create something that is unique like how do you how do you create something unique in 2024 with all these hundreds upon hundreds of years of creation and then but yet, and then, and but yet, and then, but, and yet, but, and, but that's what, what you're hinting at. That's what you're trying to create. Something you're like, I don't think any other motherfucker has, has unlocked this yet. And that's how some of my favorite bands I mentioned earlier, that's how they rose to the stratosphere. That's how they got up there because they had something no one else had. And then other bands tried to have it. And well, I got a pretty, I had a pretty specific opinion about this. You know, people always say, I know you got to run, but 
I, I know people always say, there's just not anything else you can do in rock music. It's all been done before. And I think that's just in, infinitely the opposite opinion of mine. I think almost nothing has been done before in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it's so easy to come up with something unique, right? It's hard to make something unique feel good, but coming up with something unique is pretty easy. I, I mean, I think like all you got to do is pair two things together, take a heavy guitar and put a banjo in it, take a heavy guitar and put some poco polka piano, you know, it's infinite. You can do, and it never ends. And all you need is one little thing to just make it different. You know, all the great bands from the early 2000s, 90s, whatever you want to, you want to call it. They just did one thing that's a little different in that one thing. There's millions of those things. So I, 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 I don't put up with the discussion that there's not anything else you can do in rock music anymore. I just don't think that's true. Well said. So therefore, you're an ally in this whole spiel of rock is dead bullshit is just clickbait. It's totally clickbait. Total clickbait. Totally horseshit. Yeah. Because it's just, that's, and delicate is a word I use a lot because then it's like, if you're, it depends who's making, who you're making music for, right? If you're a band that's making music, and I'm throwing a blanket statement out here, and you're trying to make songs to impress, it's like for me, I'll, I'll speak to myself. When I first moved to Canada, having spent years trying to get on the radio and then getting a dream job, and then being in an amazing spot and thinking, you know what? I could be in Toronto. I could be in Vancouver. I could be on the bigger station. And then I started making demos for people that aren't actually affecting my growth here. They're actually negatively affecting my growth to try and be what I'm not to fit them mm. that I'm not working for. And so yeah. that's what bugs me with bands where you might carbon copy or be inspired by but then you stop short at truly pushing yourself to harness a new skill for your proverbial tool belt and break new ground of, as you were just saying, you want to put poker fucking piano with just yeah. a guitar, whatever it might be. That's why when I'm talking about your songs earlier and saying, did someone just let rip and then you used it to close the heaviest breakdown on the album I've heard so far? You said, no, we spent more time doing other things than capturing someone's fart but it's where my brain went because I'm analyzing the fucking yeah. texture and the creation and the sound and the tones and everything so yeah. fucking much. Anyway, that was worth it to see you sit up in your chair like that, not to, not to cause embarrassment or anything, but that yeah. was, that was fucking Jack fired up then. And that was sweet. I appreciate you sharing it. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem at all. Okay. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you a cheeky Instagram message. Um, cool. when, when, this is yeah. on, when this is online and, and able to be shared um, and then you can do what you want with it. The last thing I will cheekily ask of you is if you're willing just to share how you feel this has been so I can just chop it, edit it and be like, check out this chat with Jack. Um, how this conversation has been? Yeah. Um, what, what's your name again? I'm sorry, dude. Don't be sorry. You don't know me other than the last 30 minutes. It's John. John. Well, that's, that's actually my legal name. So that's easy. There you go. You won't forget that. But uh yeah, John, what a great conversation, man. You got me fired up and uh, your feedback on the album was just so awesome. And it, you you got me really hyped to release the album at the end of the week and really hyped to go on tour and share it with the world. And I, and I really hope uh, there's some people that feel the same way you do about these songs. That's really kind. Thank you, man. It's awkward putting that in there, but it's something that in my 2024 resolution I want to do is actually have something that then take, because I'm not a big social media guy. I fucking don't yeah. like it. I don't like yeah, it. It's rough, dude. But we got to dance to dance sometimes. Yeah, you do. We got to you got to play the game a little bit unfortunately. Yeah. Jack, this is not this is the first of many more I feel when you're willing. Yeah, I'll same. be there. All right, man. All right. Well, I'll keep in touch, man. Yeah, you, you're surrounded by incredible fucking souls and here's to many more years of Dead Poet Society. This was an absolute thrill. Thank you. Thanks, man. Have a good day. Ciao for now, you too. what a sweetheart like that's i love this shit i i mean i'm such a giddy little i'll spare the word i was gonna say i, I get so excited to converse and nerd out and just sink into the context and the detail of someone's creation and jack collins man what a fucking dude got like excitable sweat you know excitable sweat mainly probably because of the overkill on the lights i've got on me right now but um that's it a conversation with jack collins 
Guitar player of Dead Poets Society who are gearing up to release their second record, Fishing on the 26th of January 2024. We spoke as it was dated for those that watch this. Visually, you can watch via YouTube or patreon.com slash radio, and you can listen via the old Spotify and etc. when I roll it out audibly to the podcast networks and etc. etc. But we spoke on the 22nd of January, 10 a.m. our time, wrapped up at 10.50 West Coast Pacific time. If you're watching this still, you know this band, okay? Go and put the fucking album on right now and get hyped because this is one of the premier and the most exciting modern rock bands. And and I'm not saying there aren't many. There are. But this is one of the cream of the crop of the state of modern rock in 2024. And if you have not heard Dead Poet Society and you've just been around for a good conversation... Fucking listen. Thank you for being here. I don't know if I've even reset this since my Christmas streams. No, I haven't. But we'll go with it. Whatever you're doing the rest of your day, and as always, please look after yourself. And I hope there's some fun and smiles involved in the rest of your day as well, because we've got to cherish that positive. To discover more modern rock, what was that radio.com? Dive in if you want to. Subscribe via Patreon if you want to. Otherwise, thank you for your time. And for now, cheerio.